Why Beatleism has been considered one of the key features of the human lineage since Charles Darwin's writings on the descent of man. It is a form of terrestrial locomotion whereby an organism moves by means of just its two rear legs, or put more simply, walking upright. The controlling factors and pressures that initiated and developed this feature are widely debated among the scientific community. For example, it was long believed that the earliest humans evolved in relatively open savanna environments. This created the need for a form of bipedal locomotion, or in simpler terms, walking upright. A more modern interpretation suggests that bipedalism likely developed while these early humans still lived in woodlands and inhabited the trees just like their ape-like ancestors. The evolution of bipedalism in early humans required the following anatomical adaptions. The skull is perched above a vertical spine and the foramen magnum is centred at the base of the cranium instead of towards the back as seen in apes. The occipital condyles articulate with the first vertebra of the spine. As upright walking continued to evolve, the spine in early humans began to straighten. As the vertical column continued to straighten, early humans could bend forward. This meant that less muscular effort is required for standing and walking upright, conserving energy. A short and broad pelvis is connected to an angled femur. These are linked by the gluteus medius and minimus, and their contraction when standing prevent a collapse towards the side of the unsupported limb and a tilting of the pelvis. Apes, in contrast, have a long and narrow pelvis. In early humans, the femora became progressively thicker with the larger joint connecting them to the hips. This also indicates that weight support carried by the legs increased. The valgus angle, the angle subtended by the femur at the knee, is angled in humans and early humans, contrasting to apes. This allows the foot to be placed underneath the centre of gravity while striding and for the knees to lock. This aided in walking straight for longer periods of time without much strain on muscles. The anatomical adaption described previously ultimately allowed the knees to come closer to the centre of the body. With this came enlarged heels and the great toe becoming in line with the other toes. These adaptions have increased support for body weight and in turn increased energy conservation. Determining the causes or selective pressures that stimulate the development of bipedalism in early humans is an area of investigation with many conflicting theories. This is unavoidable due to the patchy nature of the fossil record and rather speculative nature of these ideas. One of the most widely proposed selective pressures favouring bipedal development in early humans is that of energy expenditure. As previously mentioned, the walking style of modern humans is much more energy efficient than that of apes such as chimpanzees. A need for a more efficient form of locomotion would arise from a desire to travel longer distances. In 1980, scientists Rodman and McHenry postulated that bipedalism might have evolved not as part of a change in diet or social structure, but rather as a result of a change in the distribution of existing dietary resources. Specifically, around the late Miocene, between 5 to 20 million years ago, open habitats resulted in resources becoming more dispersed. Exploitation of these resources demanded a more energy efficient form of locomotion. Many of the theories postulated on the human lineage are derived from fossilised remains. Ardipithecus ramidus remains were discovered in Africa in the late 20th century. These remains were dated at 4.4 million years old and are believed to represent a being close to that of the last common ancestor between humans and chimpanzees. From analysis of the fossil, it was determined that Ardipithecus had a movable big toe, which was designed to aid in climbing trees. However, it also boasted a pelvis and feet adapted for bipedal locomotion. One of the most significant fossils depicting the development of bipedalism in early humans is that of a female Australopithecus nicknamed Lucy. This fossil, which is dated at 3.2 million years old, exhibits the early stages of bipedal evolution. However, Lucy still retained ape-like shoulder features, which allowed for arboreal living. Another vitally important fossil find was that of the Australopithecus footprints at Laetoli, Africa. 
These prints were made by three human ancestors as they walked through wet volcanic ash. The fossil shows that the main stress is on the ball and heel of the foot, with secondary stress on the outside of the foot in line with the little toe, similar to bipedal walking in humans today. The discovery of Lucy and Ardipithecus ramidus further supports the idea that bipedalism developed in early humans while we still inhabited the trees. If we examine the ideas previously discussed, upright walking likely developed in early humans as a means of exploiting a changing habitat, as well as aiding in the development of new survival techniques. This form of terrestrial locomotion was made possible by the numerous anatomical adaptions that extended to all parts of the body. This change in walking style was a great leap forward in human evolution, which ultimately led to the conquering of the terrestrial landscape.